more interesting is client form. So this has got a lot more fields and methods in it. And Eclipse will show us by the red here that this is a private field, right? The green will show that this is a public method. So it shows all private methods. These look like GUI methods. So client form looks like it's probably a part of the, the GUI of the application. Right. The other interesting bit was admin bean. And if we look at that, it has an interesting interface. This interface has got methods get order with an int, get order IDs oops, with a string, and login string string. Now it's an interface, right? If I double click this, the JD decompiler will decompile it. How nice is that? Decompiling of annotations. But JAD doesn't do that. Okay. So we can see that this is an interface to something and it's using the remote annotation. So this is a clue that this is probably using EJB remoting, which is part of the Java EE spec. If we look back at the the launch code, it's including the Java EE jar file. Right, another indication is probably using standard EJB RMI to, to talk to the server side. If we inspect some more, we'll say, see things like a field here, view orders, that is of type manage orders bean remote. So this field is one of these, is an interface to this. And this has strong suspicions of being the server side interface. Right. So another method, uh, if you don't want to use the IDE to see the, uh, the fields and the methods on the class, you can use Java P. Java P minus private means show all private methods. You give it a class path, give it the, the, the main class to use. And it will print out uh, the same kind of information. So we know it's a public class, client form, extends a JFrame. It has a manage orders bean remote, and it's called view orders, right? It has an account ID field, which is a string. So lots of inf interesting information here. It has a login method, which is public boolean. Okay. So that's it for information gathering. We just want to find out where's the interesting classes, um, what is the, the interesting... Uh, Server side method. If we want to call if we want to call methods on the server side, where do we do it? So now we're on to the next stage. We want to do active analysis. We want to do active probing of the application. So the first technique I'm going to show you is uh, using the profiler of TPTP. So we start a new uh, profile configuration, external Java application. Specify the class, which we will get directly from the run.bat file. Specify, specify the class path, which is also from run.bat. No arguments. In the monitor tab, we choose execution time analysis. And that's it. OK, so that takes a while to run. So during the stage of probing and analysis, what we want to do is we want to find out how does the execution flow of the application work? Is there any logic in the app on the client side that really should be on the server side? And then try and identify this point where we can inject our shell. So as I said, I'm going to show you three methods. The first one is this one, is profiling with the, uh, the Eclipse TPTP. The second one is going to be tracing with TPTP and then tracing with Aspect J. Right, so Eclipse has launched this application in profiling mode, and Eclipse is controlling this app. It's logging all method calls. So I'm going to do a number of discrete operations. I'm going to log in as Bob. Okay, and I'm going to click on one order. Done, and then close the app. Right. We now have the option to open this execution flow with a UML2 class interaction.
So that's magical. Eclipse has given us a complete UML2 sequence diagram of every single method flow of the application without the source code. This is doing it just by monitoring how the application behaves. So if you're familiar with UML uh, or sequence diagrams, uh, the top row will give us the different classes that are involved, and top down gives us the execution flow. So we have here our, the main method, static main called, constructor, launch GUI is called, and then we have some anonymous classes, etc., etc. If we look across for the other classes involved, there are a lot of proxies here. Uh, here we go. These are some classes we're familiar with. The manage orders being remote and the client form class. Okay, so if we scroll down to see when something happens with those. Here we see where client form is initialized. Init components is called on it. Some inner classes. Initialization finished. Here we go, action performed. So action performed results in a method called login button action performed. This is when we hit login, right? After login, validate fields. That's going to be the bugger who's stopping us from doing the SQL injection. Then login. Login then calls another method login, which is on manage orders being remote. And remember, this, this being remote, this is our EGB interface to the server side. So whatever happens from this point onwards, you can see that as server side interaction. So we call login on the server. The server login method returns. The login method on the client finishes. And then we have populate order list, which in turn calls the server side. Get order IDs on the server. The server comes back with something. And that method is finished. Right. Another action performed. The only other action we did was to click on an order, right? So order list box value change. That results in get order on the server side, which in turn returns. And populate order details finishes. And we have some uh, getters and setters on a, on a model object there. So pretty handy. We have a complete diagram of uh, all the execution flow of an application. And this all happened uh, dynamically within the app. We didn't have to decompile anything. So another technique to get the same kind of information is to use tracing with TPTP. So tracing is basically inserting print or log statements into the application so that you can follow the flow and follow the, the variables as they're going along. Now, of course, since we don't have the source code, you can't go around and manually edit all the, um, insert all the, the print line statements or the log statements. So TPTP supports instrumenting bytecode directly um, by using probes. And I'll show you how we do that. So you start a new probe project. And this is a simple probe called a method to trace a probe. This is the fragment, the actual code I want to insert. And it's just one line of code. I just want to do a system out print line, the class, the method, and the method signature. That's all. Now, these, these variables, the class name, the method name, and the method signature, you can define them up here. And TPTP will give you the option to use a number of built-in values uh, that you can use here. Right. Then if you, if you didn't want to do system print line, if you wanted to import some third-party logging library, you can do the import here. And then the final piece of the puzzle is the targets. Here you need to specify where you want to inject this code. So we're doing an include rule. Include everything in com.corsair.anything. This was the package used by our, our target class. All classes, all methods, all signatures. And exclude everything else. Right? So quite simple to apply this. We choose instrument, static instrumentation. And then we choose the target jar file. In this case, we're going to be admin client.jar.
done. So the bytecode has been instrumented. To run this new modified app, we need to change the class path. So all we need to do is use the existing run.bat script and add probe slash bin, which is the, the directory to the, the classes of our, our probing uh, probe project. Right, and that's it. Run with probe, and you can already see the print line statements coming out here. And this is the same information we had in the UML, right? Launch GUI is called, initialization is called, init components is called, etc., etc. And there's a lot of uh, GUI activity here. So let's try the same operations. Bob, password, and login. And I'll click on one. There we go. So the same information here, except here as well, we also have the, um, the arguments, the method parameters, and the return types. So it's easier to read. Login button action performed, takes an action event, validate fields, returns a boolean. Login takes two strings and returns a boolean. Then it calls the server side, manage always being remote, login, and so on. Right, so this is similar information we got from the UML, except we also have the return types, we also have the method parameters on one screen. You could have worked this out from the UML if you, if you take the, the UML methods and then go back to the jar file and open the jar file and then check the methods that were actually, or the parameters that were set for each method, you have the information there as well. I just find it's more convenient to have it all in one place, you have a complete trace um, of the application. Right. The third technique is to trace using aspect J. So aspect J, quick introduction, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a Java implementation of aspect-oriented programming. So what AOP allows you to do is, if you've got some common functionality that really has to apply to all of the classes in your application, instead of manually going and editing all of your classes, you define it in one place and you tell aspect J, put this into my application. So very similar in principle to what TPTP did, except this is, is now a, a developer tool, more than a profiling tool. So when aspect J started out, it only allowed you to do source code weaving, which was a bit pointless for our purposes, but now it allows you to do bytecode weaving. So we don't need the source code, we can directly inject into bytecode using aspect J. Some terminology here. Uh, you, aspect J calls advice is the, the new code that you're going to insert. A point cut defines where you want to insert this new code in your application. And you can use regular, well, it's almost like a regular expression. Then the aspect refers to the advice and the point cut. Gives you the aspect. Here's a simple example of uh, what an aspect looks like. Say we had a simple application. We just wanted to, uh, we wanted to print out when we're about to, to call a method called set something. And we wanted to print out again once that method is finished. This is what aspect J uh, code would look like. So you define the point cut. Where do you want this code to apply? It must apply to all calls 